Hey there guys, second attempt. I have coffee. Today is Tuesday the 9th of June, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, just past. I should be awake. I am awake on the inside. <laughs> I am not so very awake on the outside yet. I haven't really been outside other than in the backyard. I have been, it's been a bit difficult. It's been really productive. Times have been really good. This dark connection spread has been working wonders for both of us, really. And um, as a consequence, I've been there's all sorts of talk that's sort of coming afterwards, you know, in 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 succession <laughs> to um, the work we've been doing with that. I'm just really insecure as to in, in how much detail I want to go. I basically want to share with you how I'm doing and what I've been doing and, you know, hopefully ideas and things. Probably it will be best if I start off by sharing with you um, the, the tarot developments, you know, that I've been... Because there are tarot developments, yes. I have actually got my one card a page booklet all set up um let me try to show you that it's basically most of it is in dutch um but there's there's the whole you know the whole kit right there there's the star card i printed out i managed to find files sort of indirectly because i had to manipulate them a bit uh, of the Visconti Sforza cards on the British Museum website, on the collection website, and sort of uh, download the images and crop them and sort of save them in a different, you know, so that they would all be more or less the same. Introduce them into a Word document, just like I do for other decks and things. And I printed that out. That was like two and a bit pages, really, for all the 78 cards. And um, now I actually have an image on each of these pages and not just words, you know, <laughs> because that wasn't working for me. I've always wanted this ever since I started um, getting into tarot into a lot more detail a couple of years ago. Um, I've wanted to keep track of my own moments, you know, where I, I want to be able to look at those again and not have to plow through all the experience bits and uh, all the other extraneous because that tends to happen. I have, you know, I need approaches for these kinds of things. And um, this is actually working really well so far because in the past couple of days, uh, you know, week or so, we've been doing the dark deck uh, interviews first and then the dark connection spreads and quite a bit of intel has come from that and so my booklet here is actually focusing on the dark side of the cards much more so that's <laughs> heavy work <laughs> I am telling you it there are times where I just I feel like I'm obsessing over aspects and qualities and things and ideas that maybe eventually I will let this also, I will let this go, you know, at some point or other. I will manage to, you know, not be like this the whole time. But there are things that came out that were so good and I'm going to give you one example in a bit because I'm going to get into the personal things as well. But there's one example that I want to give you of a dark interpretation of a card that happened to us, that happened actually to my husband on, uh, what was it, on Saturday when he did this connection spread for himself. That was just the answer to what's been plaguing both of us for a couple of weeks beforehand. And um, it was plaguing me because I felt like I was, if this didn't get sorted out between us, basically, my husband and I, it was, 
I needed to know how this was, how this could be, how how this could happen, and if it didn't get get sorted out, I felt like, um, well, it felt in in a way it felt like the end of my relationship, which is not a possibility in many ways, you know, because we depend on each other mutually enormously. All this has been, you know, heavily impacting both of us and um so the fact that it has been impacting us for a couple of weeks and before that for years of course and that now we actually have some sort of aha okay so that actually does get validated and acknowledged and you can put names to these to these things through the cards that's just incredible so I will go into a bit more detail because there's, you know, a couple of extra things that have to do with that that I want to go into in a bit more detail. Otherwise, I want to show you this is just a regular dummy booklet that I bought in the shop. And I'm making a cover for it that looks like so with all sorts of beads and sparkles on it, which I think is going to be really cute. It's not finished. And I will continue working on this uh, probably today uh, quite a bit more, listening to Terence McKenna, who is uh, that I'm a great fan of at the moment. I'm uh, sort of, you know, filling my brain up with uh, mushroom talk rather than with actual mushrooms because that feels really scary to me. The only thing I'd be really interested in would be to have a little beeswax flask, you know, with a couple of those little psilocybins in just the way I use Amanitas because I can sense the vibrations that way without having to ingest any. So there's that. Um, maybe it'll happen. If it'll happen, if it happens, I will show you. Okay. But I'm having uh, quite a bit of fun with, fun with uh, you know, embroidery and uh, textiles. This will go around the book. And because all my journals look like this, except bigger, um, this is kind of too cheerful, which is a good thing, a good idea, you know, that my journals apparently are positive places to hang out with because I take them along always and whenever I go on the road with husband or by myself into town, you know, I will tend to take my journal with me uh, nine out of ten times and it looks something like this a great deal. Occasionally I have a green one, but mostly they're red so this looks to me like come on you know a red booklet let's uh let's go and do some things you know and with this on the outside like so it will that will suit the content of the dark side of the cards quite a bit better if you have no idea what i'm talking about let me just find you one card uh, the Knight of Wands, how appropriate. I associate in a dark manner, so in terms of, you could see this as a reversal meaning, if you like, only I am excavating a whole lot more of the reversal meaning of this card to put that on top instead. In, instead of having like a daylight, la di da, you know, sort of simple everyday daddy's got to go to work kind of interpretation of the card instead of that i'm looking at all the dark sides so for the knight of wands what i've got here is a couple of notes just the beginning because there's all this space here you know i've just got a couple of lines here and it says blindness indifference insensitivity to differences or shared pain not listening, uh, proactive, but without thinking about the consequences and a problem around choice. So just as a teeny tiny example, two examples, not listening and blindness, not seeing um, insensitivity. Those are all characteristics that I wouldn't necessarily think of if I draw a, a knight of wands. I will always think of the good stuff, you know, the, okay, we're going on a trip uh, type of thing, or we're going to um, Ibiza, whatever. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? So just as an example, 
the idea is that all my cards eventually have at least one or two notes. And as I use the booklet, as we use different types of spreads, maybe it will also get slightly less dark. It's not supposed to be 100% blackness. It's that I was watching Jennifer, Jennifer's um, dark deck interviews, and there were a couple of instances in her um, in her spreads that she did, in her card pulls that she did, where all of a sudden I went like, oh my God, I never saw that. That actually makes so much sense to me at that particular point. And, or, and so I started doing de dark deck interviews for myself. And then this whole thing bloomed open like this huge black tulip, <laughs> if you like. And I went like, oh, but the Visconti Sforza, uh, Italian Renaissance deck that I used, which had such darkness in its bright, uh, I'm going to take over the world type mentality. That was amazing. So that my cogs were just whirr, going around like that the whole time. And then on top of that, my husband came home for the weekend and he did his, uh, his own uh, spreads and things. And so much more has come out of it. It's just like it's impossible to keep track. But just one more step. I did. Uh, you, some of you may have seen this little bag. It's a velvet pouch that I engineered at some point. I was actually keeping my Desti fortune-telling cards in here, but they've been ousted for... Let me see whether I can show you. I hope I can show you. This is the little mini version of the Ghost Tarot. This will probably take an age and a half to focus. So these are like yay big. I uh, copied the, you know, downloaded the files from a website that I use for this kind of thing. If they have my deck that I want, there's a two, two of cups, I think that's rather recognizable. And because of this ghost dimension, because very often one or two or more of the characters in the card, in the image of the card, is actually a ghost. So you would say the person, the character isn't present in the same dimension as, you know, the, uh, the, the flesh and blood character. Here we have a nine of wands who is like a guardian at a, a gate of some sort where the guardian is actually also a ghost. So I was, I was, I liked the imagery quite a lot. I enjoy, um, you know, the colors are really good. The anatomy is wonderful. It's just such great work that's gone in here. Um, they're also right, quite, quite easy to buy. It's a Los Carabeo deck, so you can get the regular version very easily. Um, there's a two of ones here with a fiery element in the globe. World's globe right there. Um, the 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 ghost element sort of um, made it suddenly made it real easy for me to see this darker side, to see like for example I won't be able to find it now of course but there's a ten I think a ten of pentacles or a ten of cups in here that has uh, a family but I think three of the five members of the family are actually ghosts. So it got me thinking about all these processes where there's actually influence in our lives coming from elsewhere. Things we carry with us, things we carry around uh, with us for years, you know, without... And we are aware of the fact that it is um, maybe our mother or father or another relative or who has influenced us in a particular way. Hopefully you're, we are aware of that. Um, but we may not be aware that there's actually an influence coming from elsewhere. And the, 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 the way they did this, to me, it makes, me it, it, it makes it easier for me to see 
um, that not everything exists exactly on the same plane and things may be exercised if you like or if, if that's what you want if that's what you feel you need then you can change your relationship with a ghost if you know if you feel the need to do that so this one was completed i think uh on friday or saturday somewhere i then started working on uh, the different spreads and things and developing the idea for this booklet where uh, eventually um i'm really looking forward to working with the booklet and being able to just you know go okay where i need the two of pens where is it boom you know like that i actually have a place for all the intel to go right away and i didn't used to have that i had lots of notes notebooks but no no actual fill it in yourself tarot type thing magic so mm. so that's really cool uh, actually all that is really coming together why i am still you know kind of feeling kind of iffy and having a bit of a like sheesh i don't know where to uh where to begin really is that the cards that my husband pulled for himself actually we were you know, i have talked about this a couple of times already um we were in a bit of a situation with people where we reacted both of us we reacted very emotionally very strongly uh completely out of proportion to the things uh that were said or to uh, one person's attitude actually i don't want to go into that all over again because boring and neither of us have seen this person since so it was more like an incident and um it turns out that it was an opportunity a big time massive opportunity and those are scary right <laughs> big opportunities can be like i am going to you know change the world over this or you're gonna go like oh my god i have to get used to this idea for a little while just give me some time you know so that's what's been going on in my brain because when my husband did his dark connection spread for the situation that we were in uh during the weekend he's actually done um what's he done exactly he's done the dark deck interview for himself on saturday and he's done two dark connection spreads for more intel on that see you know last week's videos <coughs> um those dark connection uh spreads were where it's at really and in particular the first one that had to do with this situation that we were having such a hard time over the thing that happens is when he's challenged uh by somebody in this type of situation what i do is i break down in tears i dissolve i go very emotional i'm completely helpless he gets really angry and he gets angry not only at the person in question or their family or people outside he also gets angry at me so this may be very common <laughs> i have no idea to no, no way of knowing really how exactly how common this is in marriages or in uh you know partnerships between people that person a actually starts taking it out on person b when person b has done nothing to deserve that treatment and you're sort of if i am person b i'm being pushed back into a position of also helplessness i am not allowed to deal with my own emotions in the whole crapaholic uh, situation anyway um but i'm also very much pushed back into a situation of being like a child again where i uh i can't um i'm not allowed to i'm not allowed whatever period that's it you know i'm all of a sudden in a house where normally i can do whatever i please whenever i please as long as i please 
I, it's my life is perfect. I have this freedom. I can make and do and go ahead, go ahead and do things and share and whatever. And all of a sudden, all that is taken away, and I am left completely without any tools to change any of this. I cannot change my situation. I've no influence left. I've no say in anything left. And um, he he got this. He he got the, the the sense of that it was you know bad for me. I had explained it thoroughly and ex extensively over a couple of times already. But neither of us really understood how how it works. We sort of come to the conclusion at the end of several discussions about last week that it that his trigger must have something to do with his womb twin survivorhood situation, the womb twin thing, because there are other moments where he his reaction is like right off the scale. Other times, well, I go ballistic. He doesn't register anything necessarily or is like slightly uncomfortable and he tends to just sit around here somewhere. And there are some instances, especially instances that have to do with somebody paying attention to him directly in a one way or another, in, in one of a particular set of ways. And in this case, with our neighbor, it had to do with that he felt that his whole uh, existence was challenged she basically denies him the right to exist which is exactly the way i felt so in the basis the way we experience the way she behaves you know is the same um but because he is a womb twin survivor that triggers a different protocol from mine so there, there's another little, just a teeny tiny little bit of clarity that I'm getting right as I speak here, because I kind of had seen that the emotional pattern was actually the same at the beginning. At the outset, the way she makes us feel is the same. But the way we react to that feeling is different because of our different types of setup. So the very interesting thing about the dark connection spread that he did for this situation on Sunday was that the the card that he got for uh, the shadow, so the shadow that you share with your opponent, right, was the sun. So that's where I went like, Bwee! because how can the sun itself be a shadow, right? It's not so easy. You just have, you have to think about this for a bit but it has to do of course everything with identity and he got it like instantly it was like an epiphany a realization of um yeah she she denies my existence i go what was the next card the next card was the ten of swords so how does that manifest for him death but to him it isn't only about his own his himself being denied existence, himself sort of dying, if you like, right there, uh, feeling so badly attacked, which is what I feel, you know, I follow with him along up to that point. But then to him, there is a sort of a deep visceral DNA level, cellular level memory of the disappearance of his twin brother in there. And because his brother is he's reminded of his brother passing away in the womb if you like yeah subconsciously it's all there but it's hidden beneath the surface right it's not like every day that's why i'm putting these videos out there because i think yeah we're investigating things that we're that are really hard to get a hold of so um looks like i'm actually managing to talk about this now wow so what with coffee and <laughs> crafty business and gently one after the other step, you know, stepping into the dangerous terrain. Because um, I don't actually remember exactly what the other cards were. There was a recommendation card and then two unconscious, unconscious behavior 
cards coming after that. And his unconscious behavior is a knight of swords. That one I remember. Um, I will put the complete set of the cards for the five card spread into the description to complete this tale here because then because it's annoying that I don't remember all I have is a photograph in here in the in the phone you know so yeah um, I seem to recall that the recommendation for the death card so the not death the ten of swords right was actually king of pentacles and her card, so I've got them. It's all fine. It's all there. And her reaction, her her um, unconscious behavior is the Nine of Swords. So, so it was like the tarot was giving it all to him. You know, it was like sharing the darkness full on. And um, you would even wonder how there could be a darkness to a Ten of Swords. Because it's already so dark. And, of course, the answer would be, it depends on your situation. Hmm? Always. You're, it's always about where are you at? What are you talking about? What are you asking, really? And in this level of things, what turns out is that he needs to focus on physical life. He needs to, um, whenever, it, it needs to also take his mind away from the womb twin business basically even though it's there and he has to be aware of it then after that he has to go off and do something concrete something practical something that has to do with managing his life or his work or you know go go call a client or something do something of the world because he loves the world and he loves his life it's not about that anymore it's not that he just evaporates into thin air and he's gone you know but the the extent to which the dark connection spread i will put the reference to the video about the dark connection spread the first one that i did that has all the questions and so on in the description to this one definitely because otherwise none of this will make any sense the level of actual and Actually, getting at the whole womb twin business, I was stunned. I am actually still speechless. I'm trying to talk through the speechlessness here, which tends to help if I don't overdo it, you know? <laughs> it was stunning. And for him to be validated and seen... And then for, to talk to me about it and, and have his, you know, reciting his interpretations of the cards that he finds in his Sasurbito uh, booklet and using the reversals whenever possible to, uh, you know, sort of juggle the meaning around until it fits into the cubbyhole that we're talking about, uh, question-wise, and so on. And we were both stunned at how deep this goes and how... There's no limit. Turns out the tarot works at whichever level you're at. If that's where you're at, the tarot's with you. So that was really striking. After that, uh, it was kind of <laughs> downhill from there. Because, <laughs> <blah. laughs> I I still feel like, you know, I should be going to town and having... Uh, I went to town, by the way. So in terms of witchy check-in, maybe I can still go get back to that. Because I haven't been on for a witchy check-in, which I know some of you guys like, uh, for a while. So I will, uh, yeah, maybe I, I, because I've been in town, actually. I was, I went to town. So for the first time in like ages and, and so on. So I also had to get inks and stuff for for the for the ghost tarot. I had to get uh, get things, you know. Um, he did a spread for his brother, his real life brother you know his his brother who who is older than he for a couple of years older uh to sort of niggle out a couple of the differences that were a lot that was a lot less dramatic than the other one because the other one the first dark connection spread that was really about our business with the neighbors turns out to be on a sort of a right beneath the surface level it turns out to be about his whole womb twin uh business where that the intel from that illuminates the present day situation with them right 
And so that was perfect. That doesn't really happen every day. He does, he's got a really friendly relationship with his brother, who I think is subscribed to this channel. He will never watch this video because he doesn't take the time. So, but <laughs> you know, just in case. Um, it was a bit more about the differences in personality between them. It was more like your run of the mill, everyday type dark connection where everybody's got a dark connection with everybody else I think it, it's not a problem to look at some of the things that we share with people where we aren't really sharing everything in the most blissful way the whole time that's normal and then you want to sometimes you just want to know how exactly that works so I plan to do quite a number more uh, dark connection spreads in at different stages and see what comes out. However, as I also have to take notes and because of the book, you know, got to keep track of everything, I should probably slow it way down and do this once a week or so. Maybe I share with you what I get, you know, in whenever there's something really that I think is really striking or worthwhile, then I will... Uh, when, whenever it, the, what comes out illustrates another of the big, you know, things that are going on. Um, there's another thing that I'm thinking of now is that you could certainly do a dark connection spread with yourself also, which is another like ee, crazy <laughs> kind of idea. I have one more sip of coffee. It's cold by now. still tastes fine and I also have a mug of still fairly warm water because hydration badly needed um, where in the case of the dark connection with yourself you would most definitely want to apply that in case in the case of doing kundalini work yeah because, well, I've been doing Tumo recently, again, and I will, whenever I have something to report, something really, you know, tangible or clear to report on the Tumo front, I will uh, report back to you. At the moment, that's not really the case, except that um, it's there are times where it's fine and other times where it's a bit more difficult. I find that there's a definite interrelationship between interaction, if you like, between my Tumo meditation and how it's going and my hormonal cycle. So I'm in week four at the moment. I'm more and more, I have to sort of be aware of where I am in, in terms of hormones, in terms of the hormonal, you know, the lunar, the, the hormonal cycle. And it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of annoying, like, okay, so I don't want to think about this the whole time, but it has influences on my met metabolism. There are things I have to do, which in terms of meditation and energy work, I have had to do a lot of, you know, white light clearing and cleansing, that type of thing in order to uh, get rid of some of the miserable victimization protocols that I was under, you know, at least until some kind of closure could be obtained. Like last weekend with all this dark connection business, I actually did get uh, much more of a sense of, okay, now I can see. Because if my husband is triggered on the disappearance of his twin brother in, in that way, then it makes sense that I am also excluded from his world at that point. The level, at that level in, in his life, at that level of consciousness, I was never there. And now that we have talked about this, it's actually possible for me to have, to be sort of at least present to part of that discussion. And so that's been quite a shift in, in how we deal with each other, how we, how we look at each other. Uh, over the past couple of days but it's just been a couple of days really and 
Sunday we just we were, we were just sitting there stunned and we went for a big walk and that was it really and otherwise he's off to the office and you know doing his things generally I think both of us are really happy with this with these developments we we have somehow gotten um, a bit more control over over this type of uh, of thing it's it's the lack it basically it's the lack of insight and the lack of control that allows for these virulent nasty reactions to take place where you can't you're basically immobilized none of you can do anything he couldn't do anything about it and i couldn't do anything and now we both know much more about how it works so that's really good um coming back to to the tumo and stuff i find that it's um It builds up. Last time I spoke of, I did a tumor progress report. I sort of went into the fact that it, um, once you've established your protocol or your inner, your vibrational mode of working for tumo, uh, it will continue to do itself. Also, when you're not aware of it or you're not working with it or you're not push purposefully pushing any buttons down there, you know, it's it takes care of itself a lot. And I do believe that a lot of the newer approaches and insights and, um, you know, the good things, the, the way things work nowadays in my life in the past two months, they're actually a sort of a result from the clearing of the tubes that happens with TUMO. So, yeah, that's definitely the case, even in terms of ideas, even in terms of... But it's it's like I feel at the moment like I'm halfway in, sort of. So I'm still only, after a couple of months, you know, I'm, I'm only halfway in. And I'm in such a way halfway in that I can't go back I can't do undo the tumo. Um, if I were to neglect my practice in this way, not just stop doing it, for I will just get a, a, a quite a, a shakti energy, kundalini energy build up, and um, it will just force it. Like I had this during the night, actually, where I felt very emotional, and it will force out. Um, experiences of pain as well and that's nasty so I have to put that in there as well um, there's been a couple of moments where I felt like I just uh, like a ten of swords basically just endless pain not only my own but my mother's and there's a hazel tree in the garden that's been cut back too big too much and he's having a hard time and all that. It's just so much pain. So empathy up to here. And I have to move through this. I have to sort of let myself feel the things. That's the only way forward. Let myself feel. And slowly it gets better. That's basically what happens. I have uh this morning i have sort of given myself some time off really i've just been uh listening to terence mckenna in my bed with a rose big rose quartz and a couple of desi rites and just lying there and just basically relaxing as much as po possible i um because it's the pms week really i get this i get like um sort of a tension in in the articulations all over and it's just at one point it just gets too much it just everything becomes um <laughs> i get into my own you know freak hole rabbit I, I i i i get really frustrated with myself and everything becomes a problem you know so then i also get this like a short circuit in my brain where it's just endless memories of pain, endless memories of my mother and endless, you know, Second World War and Auschwitz and all, everything, everything just piling up 
and I can't see it anymore for the things. So then relaxing, actually, I actually take uh, magnesium and just a plain paracetamol, you know, type uh, painkiller just for to relax the muscles just a bit, you know, and I have my tea and I have my... Uh, I have a, another phone that I actually used to have ocean waves on a beach, you know, going back and forth like that. <laughs> really silly stuff. And a rose course, and it helps. If I take the time to relax enough and to basically just go off, off brain, off purpose, off, you know, off all this stuff. I just have to give myself a bit of a vacation now and then. So... So that has really worked, actually, which is why I'm 40 minutes in. Wow. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is I went to town. Yes. We actually went and had our pizza. We had a first restaurant moment uh, on Friday the 5th. Last uh, was the first time, I actually, the moment uh, they uh, told us on uh, from the government that we were going to get... Uh, out of lockdown in terms of restaurants and all that, I uh, ordered us a table at uh, the minute, you know, like two minutes in. I heard that and I went to the website of the restaurant that I tend to, so it's an Italian pizza pizza place in uh, in town here. And I ordered us a table for, uh, for the 5th of June. It was fun. It was okay. Except we were still very much in the womb twin neighbor thing and so I had to talk to him about that and it was friendly and comfortable and he was very accepting if he had not been this accepting of his of the way he also treats me and if he hadn't felt a certain level at least of you know shame for dragging me into this where nothing I did really you know really warrants this type of treatment um he wouldn't have been able to pull cards the way he did so now that but at that time we hadn't pulled the cards yet so we didn't know that the sort of a mapping this subconscious map which is a term that i heard terence use uh, just now about jung and things really cool all that stuff you know <laughs> um the subconscious map has been filled in a bit more. How it exactly goes, and a lot more can be said, but it needs to all settle down now. We all need to do something practical, you know. So what I was going to say about uh, being in town is that it was like 10% of the people in town. I actually went and had a coffee at my coffee place that I tend to go to when I have like little shoppings to do for the ghost tarot cards i did do something different where these are the backs of the cards and that's actually a uh, handmade nepal paper uh that i used and you won't be able to see this it's they're fairly thick but it's two layers of the paper that i put on and um uh, with wallpaper glue and then the uh, you know regular printed image from uh, from the computer like so it's an ace of pen right there I bought uh, this paper because I felt it was a really good color it's with the the camera and with my red pulley and uh, and the red light in there from the you know the orangey light in the curtains this will probably look grayer than it actually is it's like a it goes off to the lilac kind of a side purple ish purple gray ish type color and the on the edges of the cards there's a let me see if i can show that to you probably won't be able to make it out there's like a marker a metallic acrylic type marker that i bought that i used for for the edges maybe over there you can actually see a blue line going around bluish grayish line um i'm really pleased with all that i also put um like 
there I will have to do those again maybe this is possible to see there's a five of wands card and in the lower corner right here actually has the upward fire triangle and a five next to it to make it just slightly easier um, I used white ink for that I will probably have to go over those uh, little markings again I only did that for the minors not for the court cards or any of it because it wasn't really necessary with the uh with the minors there are a couple of cards that are easy to sort of mix up with um with others where you would have to i really had to you know put them all on the table like so and make sure that i actually got this uh, got this sorted out properly i haven't used the deck yet i will get back to how i use this eventually um into town i had fun at the shop where i tend to buy this type of stuff i have a couple of places that i go to for my creative materials in this line of uh, in this type of uh, of thing this shop that i went to this time has the biggest uh collections you know the largest number of different types of color paper and inks and you know cardboards and pencils and crayons and also all, all sorts and kinds that i um that I think I can get it. There's another one, another shop, more or less like it, in a fairly, you know, like one kilometer in a different direction that I also go to. Just depends on uh, where I am at that point. Um, as a, you know, as a kind of a post-lockdown report, I suppose I was really happy to be out in my own little part of the outside world again and I was kind of struck and also um, the the guy in the shop in the creative materials shop said that he actually didn't get as many students uh, over uh, at this in this period of time because people the students are all at home so they don't come by as as often but he did get quite a number of other uh, you know, clients who aren't students, who a bit, who are a bit older, or who are looking for, you know, writing and drawing materials and things to work with. And I have heard other people in other shops say the same thing, where it looks like a lot more people who are, you know, muggles, <laughs> are actually getting into arty farty uh, type uh, activities, um, because now they want something to do, which I think is very cool so there was that at the coffee house i was actually the only one sitting there with two other people we were like half a mile apart and so there's this huge social distancing thing going on everywhere where you just have these tracks through the shop where you can walk you know the toilets are all closed so luckily at the we had to go to the restaurant afterwards we went to the pizzeria and there the toilets were open, of course. Oh, hallelujah. So I think that's been my my most fundamental problem in this whole lockdown business has been that if you go out because you need shopping or you need something, you know, or you just have to get your head out of your own house for, for a bit, it's, you know, you can't go to the loo anywhere. So <laughs> that's been a big deal. That has been such a huge, uncomfortable big deal and... Otherwise, it's supposed to be an intelligent lockdown. It's actually still in operation only to the extent that I actually got to have my pizza with my husband outside outside the house uh, for the first time in, um, in forever, it feels like. Um, it sounds like a very much a, um, a wealthy girl's problem because there's so many more people out in the world who have got much bigger problems and... None of us have been ill other than I, uh, I had to deal with my tonsil issues uh, very early in uh, in March, you know, then that was going on. But other than that, I've been uh, perfectly fine. My husband's been fine. So I've got nothing to complain about, really. But um, I suppose that what happens is I feel, when I'm in town nowadays, I feel a lot less tension compared to, say, four weeks ago or longer when there was so much more fear it's it looks it looks mostly like people are also adapting and they're kind of they they there's not that much fear there's 
um, people are kind of getting used to moving around things and doing things a bit differently and they've just sort of given up a lot of the people that I meet on the streets have just basically not they're not invested in being overly fearful or overly angry anymore compared to uh, you know a number of weeks ago when that was certainly the case people were much more upset much more you know antagonistic and ding 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 the it, yeah it was like a electricity in the air the whole time which has led to the fact that i have been outside about half uh the time that i normally do i haven't you know been with you out in the park at all ever on my own i just don't go i don't i still actually at the moment i hardly ever feel like uh, going for a walk on my own at the moment it's just um it's not that it's impossible it should be possible by now to go out on my own again also you know in terms of vibration it's just that it's much more comfortable doing it with my husband because then i have something to talk to somebody to talk to something to talk about uh with him you know he needs to go out uh, in into the green uh, anyway so that's what we tend to do we tend to go for walks in the evenings and uh, that's kind of happening a bit more nowadays good lord 50 minutes i did this i did the thing i actually reported back to you i'm going to uh, upload this as is and uh i will uh, see uh, what this uh, you know what it turns out to be oh yeah dark connection video going in down here thank you so much if you lasted all this time bless your soul i thank you from the bottom of my heart and, um, you know, see you whenever we see each other, okay? Be safe and um, do find something interesting for yourself to, uh, to do, okay? Interesting, something interesting. Thank you. See you next time. Ciao.